Already got some, yeah.
Tuscany. Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. I pray that everybody is having a blessed week. Uh, Elder Beck, I've got to uh, take care of something real quick with my notes. So if you don't mind opening us in prayer tonight, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everyone. Let us open up with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for gathering on tonight, God, as we enter into another place of of thanksgiving, as we enter into another place of worship, as we enter into another place of praise. God, we thank you on tonight that we're gathered here virtually to not only speak of your goodness, but God, to hear about your goodness in your word. God, we ask that you look upon every household that is connected to this live stream on tonight, God, that you would begin to show your favor and show your glory upon each and every family. God, we ask that you look upon our leader on tonight, God, as he begins to dig deep into the word and and give us revelation. God, we ask that you would touch his body. We ask that you would bring clarity to him, God, as he brings clarity and conviction unto us. God, we ask that you would touch his body from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. And God, that we that we will be enriched by your lesson on tonight. That we'll be that we will be enriched by the word on tonight. God, we ask that you open up our hearts to receive, open up our minds to understand, open up our ears to hear what it is you have to say to us, your people. God, we praise you, we thank you, and we bless your holy name. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. Amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good to see you all on with us tonight. Thank you, Pastor Elder Beck, for your uh, faithfulness, your dedication, and your hard labor. He is my engineer for the night. Uh, he and uh, uh, Mike Dow- uh, Pastor Minister Mike Dowdy have been working on some things along with the media team, and they're bringing me up to speed and up to date on some of the technology that is out there. So we praise God for your being with us tonight. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get ready to get started. Thank you again, Pastor Elder Beck, for that prayer and, and praying for me. I'm glad really to see so many of you on tonight, especially glad to see some that uh, 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 have been sick and in and out of the hospital and And uh, Evangelist Barbara gathers. It's so good to see you on with us tonight. We thank God for healing your healing and and your deliverance. And and, uh, uh, Pastor uh, Minister Reverend Kevin and Donna and and others will be talking about that later because we have, again, it's it's painful that every week uh, we add uh, families that are going through uh, bereavement and things of that nature. So we were praying much for each other tonight, but I believe that God has a word for us just like he had a word. Listen, for those of you that were in worship, whether you were present at uh, 6600 East 42nd Street or present by way of uh, live stream, worship was off the chain this past Sunday, as it is every Sunday, but sometimes God gives us a special dose of his favor. And I believe that God just poured out on us as we poured into him on this past Sunday, that praise team under the direction of Minister uh, Rodney Martin and Minister Anthony Arnett and our mus- other musicians and singers were just, just I mean, I could, words won't describe. I just believe that God was so well pleased that in the midst of our praising him, one of our members was uh, was rushed to the hospital and later that night, early the, sometime the next morning, uh, she sent us good news that they were sending her back home, that it wasn't COVID or anything like that. She just had an asthma attack. And so we praise and bless God for that. And that's what we preached about. That's what we were talking about Sunday. Faith that gets God's favor 
And we're going to finish talking about that tonight. We talked about the favor part on Sunday. And tonight we want to talk about the faith aspect of it. Because we know that Hebrews 11 and verse 6 tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we want to look at the faith aspect. Faith, F-A-I-T-H, that gets God's favor. And we, we studied that, and let's go into the word because this is Bible study. So we want to make sure we get the word. Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28 from the New Living Translation reads like this. Then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A, gen a Gentile woman who lived there came to him pleading, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. For my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. But she gave, but Jesus gave her no reply, not even a word. Then his disciples urged him to send her away. Tell her to go away, they said. She's bothering us with all her begging. Then Jesus said to the woman, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. But she came and worshiped him. Note that she came even when when the disciples and Jesus uh, kind of uh, let her know that uh, his where his ministry was at the time. She came and worshiped him, pleading again. Verse 25, Lord, help me. And verse 26 says. Jesus responded, it isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. At verse 27, she replied, that's true, Lord, but even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath their master's table. Elder Beck preached on that some several months ago, so I won't go into all of that. But verse 28 says this, dear woman, Jesus said to her, your faith, your faith is great. Your request is granted and her daughter was instantly healed. Looking at that tonight, faith that gets God's favor. You, If you really want to get God's attention, exercise your faith. Dear woman, verse 28, Jesus said to her, your faith is great. I wonder what Jesus would say about us tonight when we go to him with our request. But know this, that even though she went to him with a request, she came to the realization that even though I have a request, God, deserve, through Christ Jesus, deserves my worship. And I just believe that it was because of the fact in verse 26, where, excuse me, in verse 25, she came and worshiped him, that that's what got Jesus Christ's attention. If you want to get his attention, the Bible says, that Jesus is sitting on the right hand of God, making intercession for us. And if you really want to get his attention, I dare you to give him a, a heart of worship, true worship, true praise. That song says, is what I want to offer you, true praise. Everybody say, true praise. True praise, true worship is what I want to offer. And when you worship God, when your praise, when your worship is from the heart, I just believe that by faith, you've got God's attention. And so he says to this woman again, verse 28, your faith is great. Your request is granted. Now, if I don't say anything else tonight, I've already said enough. That's enough word for any of us right there to be charged and to be spirit filled and to be excited to know that if I pray to God, believing and asking by faith with a spirit of worship, with a spirit of praise, that God will speak through Christ, will speak back to me and say, your faith is great, your request is granted. Somebody gonna have a testimony tomorrow. Somebody will have a testimony tomorrow because after we get off of this, this, this study tonight, you're going to go to God. You're going to offer up a praise. You're going to give him a heart of true praise, of true worship. Get off by yourself. 
Give God some real worship. Give God some real praise. It don't matter who in the house, who on your job. It doesn't matter if you're in your car. Pull the car over and give God some true praise and true worship. And tell God, speak to God your request. And watch God say, hear him through the Holy Spirit. Say, your faith is great. Your request is granted. I say to you tonight, God, I don't speak prophetically very often, but when I speak it, I believe it's cause God gives it to me. Prophetically, I'm speaking into your life tonight, into your marriage, into your home, into your disobedient child's life, your wayward child, your child that you may not even know where they are tonight, what they're doing tonight, your, your, your financial situation. God wants you to know tonight that your faith is great and your request is granted. And on tomorrow, somebody going to send me a text, somebody going to call me and say, Bishop, I know God was speaking on to me on last night because when I went to bed, I dare you to pray and pour your heart to God, out, out, heart out to God before midnight tonight and watch when you wake up in the wee hours of the morning, God will give you a confirmation in your spirit that baby, that promise is going to leap in your spirit to let you know your faith is great and your request, hallelujah, is granted. Be saved, be healed, be delivered, set free. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to bind up those that are the, that the, the broken, to heal the brokenhearted. God is speaking into you tonight that your faith is granted, and your faith is great, and your request is, okay, let me get on into this word. Let me get on into this word. So we looked at this word favor. This word favor has multiplied meaning. And when we really get into, when we talk about grace, we superficially we know a little of the definition, grace is unmerited favor. But grace is more than that. When you are anchored in God, when you are praising God, when you're worshiping God, when you're walking in faith in God, God multiplies his grace and gives you unlimited above and beyond favor. Let me say that again. I just got that for tonight. God gives you unlimited favor. That study the book of Deuteronomy, especially around chapter 28. God says in his word that if you walk in faith and if you walk in obedience, what he'll do for you, what he'll give you, what he'll bless you. He'll bless your going out and your coming in even forevermore. From hence forth, he'll bless your going and your coming. If you have faith and believe that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But let me get on here. Faith, a favor is the divine, divine influence upon a person's life, that grace, that favor, which affords joy, pleasure, and delight. Grace is God blessing us in spite of our unworthiness. But it goes beyond that. Once we become saved and we're growing and walking, growing in grace, that's what the word says in the book of Peter. I'll talk about that more later. We grow in grace and then the knowledge of Jesus Christ and as we grow in grace, that means we're growing in favor. What are you talking about there, Bishop? I gave you another definition of that favor piece on Sunday. Favor is the tangible evidence. Tangible. You can feel it. You can touch it. You can see it. You can smell it. You can hear it. Tangible evidence that a person has the approval of the Lord. Now, you might say, Bishop, that's morbid, but here, here's a piece of that, because all we think about is life on this side. But when you have the favor of God, God is preparing us for the life, that eternal life, that is intangible, that man, that Satan, that nobody can touch, that life that he gives us on the other side of this journey, that after death, to be eternally in the presence of the Lord, resting in the Lord, awaiting his return when the dead in Christ shall rise and those that remain are caught up to meet him in the air. That's favor, y'all. To know that when we leave from this life on this side, 
that there's greater on the other side. That's why we, we must understand and grow in the grace and knowledge of God so that we don't become sought, that our sorrow, the word said, is not unto death because God has, we sorrow not as those who have no hope because our hope is in Jesus Christ. But let me go on and get into this. So grace is God blessing us in spite of our unworthiness. But the above and beyond favor that comes with grace is the tangible evidence that a person has the approval of the Lord. What is some of that tangible evidence? I'm glad you asked that. I talked about this Sunday morning, that, that when you are a child of God and you're walking in the favor of God, you've got unspeakable joy that in spite of life circumstances and life situations, you have a joy that you can't even explain it. You just get up in the morning happy and you, and you know some things you're going to face through the day, but you're still happy. You still got peace. And people say, how come, how you got, how you walking like that? And you can tell them that I'm walking because I like this because it doesn't matter what's going on in my life. I'm walking in the favor of God. So I talked about three things about favor and I'm moving on. Grace, grace, God's favor is grace multiplied. God's favor can produce supernatural increase and in promotion. God's favor brings restoration of everything that the enemy has stolen. God's favor gives unusual victory, even against impossible odds. Romans 8.37 says, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ Jesus our Lord. So let me go on and talk about the faith aspect of receiving, of getting, benefiting, and being blessed with God's favor. Faith that positions you to receive God's favor has three aspects that I, I hit on Sunday and I had to get through them and 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 move on uh with 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 what I with would move on so we could get out of uh the building. But God so overwhelmed us. I listen, I don't ever want us to stop when God is is, is because what we do in praise and worship is coming to the presence of God. And praise and worship is about blessing God. So I don't ever want to stop when God's spirit is moving in the body. You don't hinder and you don't dampen and you don't stop God's program. This ain't about us. It's all about God. So that's why some people some people might say, well, Bishop, you wasn't up very long Sunday. I, did, I wasn't supposed to be. Because God had already foreordained how that worship experience was to go. And because of that, it was all we recognized it was about what God was doing and not about what we thought we were doing. Amen. So faith that positions you to receive God's favor has three things that I, I want to bring out to you tonight. There is the plea of faith for the impossible. There's the persistence of faith that is imperative. And there's the provision of faith that is inevitable. So if you do number one, work the plea of faith for the impossible. If you do number two, continue in the persistence of faith that is imperative. Number three will come to pass. The provision of faith becomes inevitable. That's what Jesus was telling this woman that came to Jesus about her daughter that was possessed with the demons. That's why Jesus says, to her, dear woman, your faith is great. Your request is granted. Hebrews 11 and 6, as I said earlier, as I started, says it is impossible. The message Bible says it's impossible to please God. Excuse me. It's impossible to please God apart from your Faith, everybody say faith, apart from your faith. And it goes on to say, the Message Bible says, and why? Because anyone who wants, yes, there it is on your screen. Anyone who wants to approach God must believe both that he exists and he cares enough to respond to those who seek him. It's impossible, hear me out, to please God without faith. Amen. Faith is as much a matter of cultivation 
as it is a choice. And though faith begins with our choice to trust God, it's developed and it's matured through a series of trials and testing. Did y'all hear what I just said? Faith is developed. It's matured. Not one of us on here tonight, if we gave the truth of our testimony, can honestly say that if I hadn't gone through I went, what I went through, I never would have realized how powerful and strong and beneficial faith in God really is. That's why the, the, the writer said, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. And he went on to say, if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. I wouldn't know what faith in God could do. But through it all, I've learned to trust. Your trials and your tribulation, the testing of life strengthens your resolve. It strengthens, develops, and matures our faith. And we are commanded in scripture, 2 Peter chapter 3, 18, I said that earlier and I told you I'd give it to you again. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, we are commanded to grow in the grace, to grow in favor with God. And that's why I'm talking to you tonight to help us to realize how we make that happen. To grow in the grace and the favor, the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Grow. This growth is spiritual growth. It's growing in faith. At the moment we receive Christ as our Savior, we're born again spiritually into the family of God. But just as a newborn baby requires nourishing milk for growth and good development, so also a baby Christian, a baby child of God, requires spiritual food for growth. Now, it's alarming to see the number of people, the number of Christians that are still sucking on a bottle when they ought to be eating the meat of the word of God. Yes, Lord, and amen. I'm just talking about what the Bible's teaching us. We need spiritual food to grow. It's spiritual growth, spiritual food, growing in the knowledge of God, growing through our tests and our trials, that through the process of all that, that's spiritual food. We're growing in the word. And as we're maturing in the word, we're better able to handle the stresses of life. I can't emphasize that to enough because so much is going on around us tonight. So much in our lives. Daily, we're hearing about deaths. We're hearing about uh, COVID. We're hearing about family problems and financial woes and all these kind of things. But in the midst of all of that, God, as I said in Romans 8, 37, says that he's given us the victory. We're more than conquerors through Christ that loved us. And so we become, uh, as we become Christians, we become spiritually born into the family of God. And as a newborn baby requires nourishing milk for growth and good development, a baby Christian requires spiritual food for growth. And like a newborn baby, like they crave milk, we ought to crave the word of God. There ought to be, run, this, this line ought to be running over with people of God, especially wanting to get in to hear the word of God tonight. Because I guarantee you that the devil kept somebody away. Now, I know that some families pray for the Martin family. A lot of the family are seeing about Deacon Martin tonight uh, and and uh, praying, we're praying with him. God bless me and my wife to be there last night. And we're praying for uh, for him and for that family. Uh, and so they, they, they're they where they're supposed to be. Some people at work, we understand that. But some people just sitting home watching TV, doing whatever. And I guarantee you tonight that they're gonna be faced with a challenge this week that had they had the word of God tonight, where God prophetically was speaking into the lives of his people. What God is saying tonight would have given them the strength that they need for tomorrow. We need the spiritual word of God, spiritual food, so that by it we grow up in our salvation. 
Milk is used in the New Testament as a symbol of what is basic to the Christian life. Milk is basic. Spiritual milk is basics, is the basic. But God says in his word that we ought to grow up in the word to where we leave the basics of Christianity and move on to greater things. And as we move on to the greater things of the word of God, that's when we really begin to experience the above and beyond favor of God. That's when we really begin to experience that, that at the, the overwhelming joy and overwhelming peace and overwhelming strength that begins to abide with us, that's in us that get not only gets us through that, but it empowers us and enables us to encourage and help others to get through. Amen. So let me, let me go on so I can get on. I got to get on in this because my time will be running out. What should a Christian diet consist of? I'm glad you asked that. Very simply, the word of God. What should our diet consist of? the word of God. The truths taught in the Bible are rich food for Christians. Peter wrote that God has given us everything we need for life through growing in the knowledge of him. Listen, whatever you're dealing with in life and even the good things, if you wanna praise God and you should praise God for the good things and praise God for bringing you through the rough spots, but whatever you're faced with in life, all you got to do now, use technology, Google it, Google it, Google script, Google, say, I need a Google, I need a scripture, search scripture or, or use your whatever her name is that, and just hit the button and have uh whatever, whatever name is say, uh, I need to search for a scripture on financial deliverance, or I need a search for a scripture on deliverance from addictions. Maybe not for you, but for somebody else. But there will come a time as you mature in your walk with the Lord that you may not just be able to quote it off the top of your head, but you'll know where to go in the word and find it. That's where we are beginning to grow in the knowledge of him. And 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 and, and what are you saying there? The word tells us in, in, uh, in the scripture, in the book of Romans, in the book, in chapter 10 of the book of Romans, it tells us right there, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, hearing the word of God, the word of God, what we're talking about tonight, what you hear preached on Sunday, that's the word of God. And when you meditate on the word, that's God speaking to through his Holy Spirit, speaking words of faith into your life. We need that. So in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 through 11, I'm not going to read all that, but that's where Peter lists the character qualities that need to be added to our beginning point of faith in order for maturity to take place and for us to have a rich journey, a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of Jesus Christ. That's where we need that. We need to grow in the word. Let, well, let me move on because my time is, is running quick. So verse 28 of Matthew 15, again, reads like this, New Living Translation. Dear woman, Jesus said to her, your faith is great. We're talking about faith that gets God's favor. Your faith is great. Your request is granted. And her daughter was instantly, instantly healed. Far too many of God's children profess faith. But in actuality, hear me, hear me, hear me tonight. Many of us profess faith in Christ, but we don't practice faith. Did y'all hear what I just said? We profess faith. Oh, Bishop, you know I love the Lord. I believe God. I know if God is able to do this. I know God is a healer. I know God is a healer. I know God is a comforter. I know God will set the captives free. You, you say you know it. Well, why don't you practice it? I'm challenging you tonight to don't just talk about what God can do. Truly believe and, and, and the evidence of my belief 
is what I practice. It's what I speak. Speak the oracles of God. Speak the word of God over your life. Speak that you're the head and not the tail. Speak that you're above and not belief. Speak that you're the lender, not the borrower. But listen, whatever you speak, you got to walk in faith and obedience to God's word in order for it to happen. You can't speak that you the, that God is bringing you out of financial situations and you keep doing crazy things. And when God brings you out, you find an avenue to go back in. Oh, help us tonight, Holy Ghost. Bishop walking tall tonight. I know I'm walking tall tonight because when you talk about walking in faith and walking in obedience, you got to be obedient to what God's word is saying about your deliverance. We should never, when God brings us out of bondage, we should never find ourselves going back into what he just brought us out of. Hallelujah, somebody. He has provided us a way. So let me go on and get through this. God's children should do more than just profess faith. We've got to practice faith. Faith that cannot withstand testing. All oh, hear me tonight. Faith that cannot withstand testing is a faith that can't be trusted. Somebody ought to shout yes and Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, for giving me that word tonight. Faith that cannot withstand testing is a faith that can't be trusted. If your faith fizzles before the finish, it was faulty from the first. Oh my God, my God. I just said something there. If your faith fizzles, I'm not talking about if you stumble. I'm not talking about if you fall. I'm not talking about if you err, but I am talking about if I stumble and stay down, it's because that's what I choose. If I fall and don't get back up, it's because I choose to stay there. Because if, if God has put faith in us, as he has if we are saved, he provides us an avenue. He empowers us. The songwriter says, we fall down, but we get back up. We fall down, but we get up. For a saint is just a sinner who fell down. A sinner saved by the grace of God. That many times I've fallen but I keep getting back up. And even in the times when I wasn't sure I was going to make it, God will send somebody in your life to give you a word of hope, to inspire you, to help move you, to empower the Holy Spirit to move in you, to get you up from where you are and to walk on by faith. So let me get on in this. Our text deals with a woman whose faith was put to the test by none other than Jesus himself. To her credit, she passed the test, receiving not only her petition, but his praise as well. And even when it looked as though the Lord would refute, listen to me, even when it looked like God, I mean, excuse me, Christ was going to refuse her request, she persisted in her faith and obtained God's favor. So look at this, the plea of faith. She persisted in her faith and obtained God's favor. That's why the word says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. I said this Sunday, knock and it shall be open. Persistent, the plea of faith. You hear what I'm saying? The plea of faith, the persistence of faith. But let me say something about this plea a little bit more. The plea of faith is for the impossible. It cannot be done with natural abilities. It's the supernatural power of God working in us. That's the, that's the anointing. God, I need your anointing. I need a fresh anointing every day for the challenge of that day, God. I need a freshness of your spirit. I need the supernatural power of God to work in me, to work through me, to work for me, the supernatural, the anointing of God. I, we need a freshness of that anointing every day. This woman had a plea of faith for the impossible. Note her request. She cried unto him saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. How often 
Do we, let me back up here and I can help you with this. There was another woman with the issue of blood and the scriptures say that she tried every doctor. She went everywhere she could to find a healing. And it says for 12 long years, but then she heard that Jesus was coming to town. Listen, how much pain and suffering, how much stress could be lessened if before we went anywhere, we went down on our knees and talked to God about the situation. Because sometimes, instead of us having to go over the river and through the woods to get back to where God wants us to be, God says, if you had just talked to me in the first place, I would have granted, just like the woman, the text says that she, she, the text says that your faith is granted, your faith is great, your request is granted. When she first went to Jesus, she could, uh, you, we could eliminate some of the headaches we go through if we take our burdens to the Lord and leave them there. The plea of faith of this woman was for the impossible, that which could not be done with natural abilities. We cannot rebuke demons. We cannot, there's some things we can't get out of without the grace and mercy of God. We need his power. So this, apparently this woman had heard so much about Jesus. No doubt she had heard about the miracles that he could perform. She heard that he could cast out devils. In Matthew 12, we see he cast out devils. In Matthew 14, he fed the 5,000. In Matthew 14, 34 through 36, he healed many that were diseased. And so now here in Matthew 15, this, this, this non-Jewish woman comes and brings her burden to the Lord. Faith is not needed for the feasible. This woman was requesting something totally outside of her scope of ability. And so oftentimes we deal with things that are outside of our scope of understanding, let alone of being able to solve them. There was no way she could deliver her demon-possessed daughter on her own, excuse me. But as the song says, God specializes in things that are impossible. Have you any rivers that seem uncrossable? Have you any mountains you can't tunnel through? God specializes. He's a specialist above all specialists. He specializes in things thought impossible, and he'll do what no other no other power can do. So notice the Lord's response. He answered her first the first time. He answered her not a word. That's why the, the Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be given. The word says in verse 23 that he answered her not a word. And, and listen, in all honesty, if we're honest about it, God's silence and sometimes God is silent. And, some, and his silence can be very disheartening, but it's the trials, the obstacles, the difficulties, and even sometimes the defeats that we face that are the very food that feed our faith and position us for that above and beyond favor. Yes, throughout the word, we can see that in so many, so many examples I can give you, but I got to hurry on. So there's the plea of faith for the impossible. And then there, and we see with this woman, the persistence of her faith is so imperative. It's a necessary requirement. And his disciples came and besought him saying, send her away for she cried to us. She cries to us. The word crieth after implies that this woman followed behind Jesus and repeatedly begged for his help. This woman is making a repeated and insistent request in Matthew 7, verse 7 and 8, as I said earlier, he, it says, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking in the New Living Translation and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. Everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Notice the woman's persistent faith 
resulted in worship. I told y'all that from the very beginning in Matthew 15, 25. Her persistent faith resulted in worship. Listen, so sometimes God will allow us to go through what we're going through to bring us back to our knee, to, on our knees, to bring us back into faith, to bring us back into worship, to where we, listen, when we lift up our hands and worship, not only are we lifting up, praising and worshiping God, but we're saying, God, I surrender my life to you. I surrender my struggles to you. I surrender my difficulties. I surrender my all and all and all to you, God, because you are worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're God. All, you're sovereign. You're omnipotent. You're omnipresent. You're omniscient. God, you can do all things. And for that, I worship you. I praise you. And watch, won't God bring some ready results? And so he tells this woman, because of your persistence, you're going to experience my favor. The faith that God favors is a result of worship. She'd been following Jesus at a distance, but now the weight of her need moves her closer to him. That's what worship will do for you. The result of your need will bring you closer to God in a spirit of worship. The woman's persistent faith refused to waver. My time is running out. Her faith refused to waver in Matthew 20, 15, 26 and 27, especially verse 27. And she said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. She answers the Lord's statement by saying, it's true, Lord, and this is all of us. It's true, Lord. I'm not worthy or deserving of your help. Don't ever get arrogant before God. Come humbly before the throne of grace that he might exalt you in due time. It's true, Lord. She's saying in her heart, what she's really saying is, I'm not worthy or deserving of your help, but I plead for the crumbs of mercy from your table. This woman's faith it refused to weaken. It refused to waver. And so Jesus says to her in verse 28, and I'm, I got to finish this up here. He says to her, your faith is great. Your request is granted. And her daughter was instantly healed. So we see the plea of faith is for the impossible. What can't be done with natural abilities. The persistence of faith is imperative. It's a necessary requirement. And so the last thing we look at here tonight relative to faith that gets God's favor is the provision, provision of faith is in a, inevitable. If you plead with God, if you're persistent in your faith with God, the provision, the request is sure to come. That's a promise. Matthew 15, 28a, the woman received the Savior's praise. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is thy faith. Great is thy faith. The woman received the fulfillment of her petition in 28b. Your request, O oh my God. If that don't do something to your spirit, not too much will. To hear God say, your faith is great. Your request is granted. That song that says, you've been praying a long time. You've been believing a long time. I think that's Shirley Caesar that sings that song. You've been praying a long time. You've been believing a long time. It's your time. It's my time. It's my time. You ought to say that tonight. That is my time to be blessed. When you walk in faith, when you walk in obedience to the word of God, you can say, based on the promises of God, that is my time. It's my season to be blessed. 
And you can say, my family is blessed. My home is blessed. My marriage is blessed. My health, I'm blessed. I'm blessed on my job. I'm blessed wherever I go. Wherever, I, when I walk into the bank, I walk in with blessed, with favor on my face. When I walk in my job, I walk in with favor on my face. When I come home from a hard day's labor, those of you that, that labor on regular jobs and even myself, as I go through some helping and blessing and, and, and my wife being encouragement to others, that when you come home, you can still have favor on your face. That when you walk in the grocery store, standing in the line, going down the aisle, passing people, they look at you and they see favor on y'all not hearing what I'm saying. People are, that's what the word is talking about here. When I talked about what favor looks like, when I said favor, ah, oh, yeah, I got to go. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. Favor is the tangible evidence. Y'all hear me? My business is blessed. You see, we ought to see favor in your business. I see it coming tonight. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. You've been praying a long time. You've been believing a long time. I'm believing. Listen, we got a godson that we adopted, Miss Dora Sheets' grandson, Al McKellar. And I just, I, I, I'm speaking it tonight. I declare favor over his life. He wants to go pro. I declare tonight that God is going, not going to, God is giving him favor. You want to be healed from your sickness? Start speaking favor of your life. Lay hands on yourself. Put your hands on your head. Lay hands on yourself and say to yourself, they say you crazy when you say self. But tell somebody, I'm crazy in Jesus. I'm crazy in my faith. I'm crazy in my walk with God because I speak tonight that favor is on my life. I'm healed because I'm favored by God. I'm set free because I'm favored of God. My business is blessed because I'm favored of God. My children are blessed because I'm favored of God. My grandchildren are blessed because I'm favored of God. My marriage is blessed because I'm favored of God. My finances are blessed because I'm favored of God. Oh, do y'all hear me tonight? The sanctuary church is blessed because we're favored by God. I declare that tonight. I declare that tonight. Let me calm myself down. Favor. Favor is upon you tonight. Tonight. It's the tangible evidence that a person has the approval of God. Faith that gets God's attention. The woman in Matthew 15, 28, received God said to her, your faith is great. Your request is granted. I dare you tonight. I challenge you tonight to walk in faith, walk in obedience and experience the above and beyond favor of God over everything that you touch. Walk through your house. Put your hand on your checkbook. Put your hand on your body. Whatever it is, lay your hands on it tonight and believe in the promises of God. As I say all the time, trusting the process, that it's your season, that it's your time, it's my time to be blessed. I'm coming out of my sickness. I'm coming out of my disease. I'm coming out of my pain. I'm coming out of my suffering. I'm coming out of my depression. I'm coming out of my anxiety. I'm coming out of the bondage tonight because I'm walking, I'm living in the above and beyond favor of God. Yes, Sister Vanessa, and that's the ultimate thing, that my mind is blessed. 
my mind is blessed. And because my mind is blessed, everything about me, everything around me, everybody I touch will be blessed. This is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap what I've sown. See, I haven't been perfect, but I sure have been faithful. God's got a purpose, yes, and I know he's able. I've got a seed in the ground that he's blessing, no more stressing. I've got a seed in the ground. Now I know him. I can show him that this is my season. And you ought to say that. Doesn't matter what you face with tonight. You ought to be able to say, after what God just spoke to us tonight, that this is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. Elder Beck, you still with me tonight? Yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Y'all give me a second to get my music going here. And let, let me get my music going here. Let me get my music going here. Where'd it go? There it is. There it is. Let me get my music going here. I got my music going here. We're going to get ready to go. Charles Jenkins and the Fellowship Choir, Chicago. We don't own the rights of this music. But as we get ready to go to God in prayer, we pray that God has spoken a word into your life tonight because he sure has spoken a word to me. If didn't nobody else get it tonight, I know I got it. And we want to encourage you to keep the faith. Keep the faith and begin to speak it into the cosmos that I've got the Lord's favor on my life. So as we pray tonight, we have several prayer requests. Naturally, we ask that you keep in prayer Bishop Stephen and Lady Irma Wilson. We want to pray for Deacon George and Mother Willie Martin and for their family. We want to pray for Pastor George, Lady Toy and Martin and family. Continue to pray for Brother Porter Johnson and also for his, his wife, Sister Sandra, Dr. Joe and Sister Lois Sawyer. And please lift up Pastor Christopher Ball, a dear friend of me and my wife, and his wife, Lady Yolanda Ball, in the New Revelation Baptist Church. Pray for um, one of our cousins that's generally on the call, uh, Keith Wilson. Also pray for uh, one of my cousins as well, one of our nephew cousin, uh, brother Co Minister Corey Mitchell and his wife Arian. They'll be funeralizing, celebrating his mother's life on tomorrow. Norma Jean uh, Mitchell. We want to pray for them in Dayton, Ohio, that God will give them peace, give them comfort. So many other families, the family. Sister Mary Brown, who uh, some of our family members celebrated her life on this past Saturday. We want to continue to pray for them. We want to pray for uh, Sister LaDonna Williams and Minister Reggie Williams in the passing of her uncle. And I, I believe it's this weekend they'll be celebrating his life. And listen, I always pray that even in the midst of death, that somebody will find eternal life. That's always my prayer. That those who die in the Lord, that their dying was not in vain. So we pray that when they know the Lord and they go home to be with the Lord, that there's a word spoken in the life of someone that's left behind, that they'll come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior of their life. So we pray for each one of these individuals. So many others. I uh, I do a, a prayer at 12 o'clock noon every Tuesday with New Revelation and Pastor Ball and Lady 
Yolanda Ball and so many calling from across the country. We need to pray for one another. Encourage each other. Edify one another. Be a blessing to one another. As God richly blesses you, be a blessing to someone else. So keep the faith. Don't give up. For your blessing is right around the corner. Just keep moving and you'll see it in just a little while. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for presence, your presence. We thank you for your strength. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your joy. We thank you for your love. We thank you, God, for so many things that you've already brought us through. And not only, God, have you brought us through, but there's some things that because we're already in the midst of tonight, we've gained new strength, new energy to go on through. God, we want to say we love you tonight. We adore you. We bless you. We praise you. Because God, even in the midst of everything else that's going on around us, you're an awesome God. You're such a caring God. You're a loving God. You're a compassionate God. You're a forgiving God. And for that, we say thank you. God, we bless you tonight. We pray that you'll forgive us of our sins, the sins of commission, the sins of omission, the sins of transmission, the sins of permission. We bless you tonight. God, we pray tonight as we come before you. We lift up those that are on our prayer list tonight. God, with sickness around us, with death around us, with grief around us, with sorrow around us, with disappointments around us, with stress and dis dis de de depression around us. Lift us, God. Bring us from where we are in our minds to where you would have us to be. Lift us out of our burdens and help us to know that we must cast all of our cares on you because you care for us. God, we pray for businesses tonight that they'll grow and prosper. We speak favor over our businesses tonight. We speak favor over our children's lives tonight that even when the school says they're incapable of learning, we know they've got your favor. We speak favor over our marriages tonight. Even though some of us may be experiencing difficulties, God, we speak your favor that you're turning it around even right now. We speak favor over our finances. We speak favor, God, over our minds. God bless us tonight. God, we pray tonight a special prayer. We pray especially tonight for, the, for Mother Martin and the family. God, we thank you and pray that you'll continue to keep Deacon Martin, ever in your care, give him comfort, give him peace, keep him from pain, relax him, oh God. Thank you that he knows you and that he's anchored in you. But God, we know tonight that his family needs encouragement, that they need that strength. And we pray, God, that you will grant our request. And other families, the Mitchell family, the Brown family. We pray for Elder Patty and his family and others that are going through grief, Sister LaDonna Williams and so many others. We pray, God, for those that are in the hospitals, those that have been released. God, that you'll give them the full activity of their limbs, that you'll give them breath back in their bodies, free their lungs, Free their hearts, free their kidneys, free their arteries. God, free their sinuses. Give them your favor. God, we pray tonight for every pastor that is standing on the wall, that as we stand to encourage others, God, that we too might be strengthened, that we too might be encouraged. We pray for Pastor Ball tonight. We pray for his wife. 
We pray for a new revelation to church, new revelation church. God, that you'll bless them, that you'll keep them. And as we leave this place tonight, God, let us ever abide in your presence. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you.